Hello everyone, CDNet here with another update from the FNC ecosystem. Just yesterday, the Blue Finance team announced their Vampire Tech strategy on Trader Joe. So I figured now is a great time to quickly talk about what a Vampire Tech is um, and what we may expect this to look like and also potentially how you could play a role in it and potentially benefit from it. So in order to get started uh, discussing this, it's best to start by explaining what a Vampire Tech is. But in order to do so, um, especially for the people who may be newer to DeFi, I'm just going to quickly explain again how an AMM works. So I'm on Trader Joe here right now. Um, and Trader Joe is an AMM, which means that um, all tokens are listed in a pair. Um, so you can see some pairs here. Um, and essentially these tokens in each of these pools, in each of these pairs, they trade against each other along a liquidity curve, meaning that as there is more of one token in the pool, um, they become relatively cheaper versus the other one. Now, Trader Joe does not technically own that liquidity itself. It's provided by uh, its users. Um, and in return for providing that liquidity, they're paying out some of their Joe tokens. Uh, and that's what's resulting in this APR. It is, you can view it as a risk premium. Um, some money you get paid for taking the risk of being exposed to permanent loss while you're depositing your tokens in a liquidity pool. Now, ever since Strategy has been live, and even ever since Pangolin has been live uh, a couple months before them, we have fairly quickly seen protocols building on top of this uh, mechanism. So, for example, both Snowball and Yieldcheck, they have auto-compounding strategies, which means that they take your Geo reward, your APR, and they're selling it for the original tokens and putting those back into the pool, meaning that hopefully you gain a higher share of the pool and thus a higher share of the rewards, and thus compound your earnings. Another protocol that we have seen building on top of this is Penguin Finance, uh, which also takes your LP tokens, so for example your Joe tokens or your Penguin tokens, but rather than that it sells the rewards for anything, it just gives its own token as a reward on top of that. So knowing that, one famous example of a vampire attack is the attack that SushiSwap did on Uniswap. In this case, SushiSwap promised some or gave away some Sushi tokens. Uh, for everyone who deposited their LP tokens. So in this case, the tokens that you got from Uniswap when you supplied liquidity to a liquidity pool. If you deposit those in SushiSwap rather than in Uniswap, you got some extra sushi on top of the Uniswap APR. Another potential vampire tech people talk about is between Ethereum and the L2s. Um, of course, the L2s typically present themselves as beneficial to Ethereum. Uh, they're still using Ethereum, uh, they're just doing it faster. Basically, you deposit your ETH in their contracts and then you use their blockchain uh, to transact. All of this is sort of beneficial to Ethereum, but one often discussed uh, attack factor, vampire attack factor, would be for an L2 to introduce their own token and start using that token as a gas token rather than Ethereum, which would not completely separate it from Ethereum, but essentially it would be a vampire attack of sorts as well. But I think we can be optimistic that that won't happen. So how does it work in Bufi's case? Well, the vampire farms are not currently live, um, but essentially the explanation you can find in their docs, and it is similar to what I just explained. Um, you have your regular Trader Joe APR, so this is you deposit your LP into Trader Joe itself and you get uh, Joe tokens in return. If you use Bufi's vampire farms, you get the Trader Joe APR, but instead of getting it in Joe, it is sold for Bufi tokens. Then you're gonna get a little bit of extra Bufi on top of it. And finally, they're also staking that Bufi into CBufi, uh, which is kind of similar to uh, IPFi or XJO, uh, that's not around anymore, uh, where basically the number of Bufi that one CBufi represents is continuously increasing. Now, just based on that step, you may think it's not that bad for Trader Joe, um, because essentially uh, Bufi would be subsidizing their liquidity pools. So essentially, uh, Bufi is giving you extra money to put your liquidity into Trader Joe. Um, the downside would be that they are selling the Joe rewards. And of course, depending on the share of rewards that they're getting, um, that could be a big price pressure, downward price pressure on Trader Joe. But Trader Joe does, of course, have some value um, of its own, the Joe token, uh, because you can stake it for uh, SGO to get uh, USD stablecoins, uh, VGO to boost your farm rewards, or their RGO to participate in their Rocket Joe launchpad. But of course, since Bufi also directly referenced Tushi versus Uniswap, um, there is a chance that they may at some point try and move that liquidity over from Trader Joe into Bufi, uh, in which case it will be a more complete vampire attack. 
Now because the vampire farms are essentially selling Trader Joe for Bufi, that exerts downward price pressure on Joe and upward price pressure on Bufi. Now they have included this table in their documents. Um, it's a theoretical simulation. I'm not sure if it uh, will work out exactly like this. But the main thing is that the more of the Joe emissions they manage to capture, uh, the more they're going to sell for their own token and the more they're going to essentially exert downward price pressure on the Joe token. Now we can already see that some people are anticipating this move. Um, as you can see, the Bufi token has increased quite a lot over the past day. But of course, this is when the farms are not yet live. So it's definitely a um, kind of news-based pump, if you will. Uh, and you can also see that some people have already profited off the, the little pump here. Um, so you know, not financial advice, the market cap is quite low. Um, so relatively small trades could swing the price still quite a lot. But since it's like been moving so much today, I felt like it may be worth just to cover and to possibly explain to you um, what may cause the Bufi token to rise here. But that's essentially it for today. Uh, I took the opportunity today to wear my PFI t-shirt uh, because I have one. I do not have a Bufi t-shirt, so I couldn't wear that. And I missed out on the Joe swag at the summit, sadly. Uh, I hope to get my head at some point, but I haven't figured out how to redeem my token yet. But yeah, that's essentially it for today. I do not know and I will not make any predictions about whether the attack will work or even whether the economic simulation makes sense. Uh, I just wanted to explain real quick like what the mechanism is that they're trying to use within DeFi um, and then hopefully you can make your own judgments. Intuitively, I think it makes sense. So it's probably something a little bit in that direction. Um, but do also keep in mind that some people are selling the news, if you will. That said, if you're interested or just want to hedge against it, check it out. Uh, I will leave some links in the description as always. But for now, thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you in the next one. And goodbye.